Okay, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hope you're all doing well. Had a refreshing weekend. Okay, that's great. All right. So uh, we'll pray and then we'll continue to study about the subject uh, uh, called faith. Um, so uh, who would like to lead in prayer today? Anyone? Okay, it's open. Uh, invitation is open for online as well as on campus students. Anybody would like to lead in prayer? Okay, I'll just pass the mic to her. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this very morning and for long you kept us well and today we are about to start the class. We ask for your guidance and the teacher Holy Spirit teaches, guide us, things we are going to study, help us to understand well and, to, and take us to, to the deep meaning of every and each scriptures, Lord. Help us, guide us and let our focus be on study while we are studying. And whatever we study, we'll remember, we'll by heart everything as you are teaching us. And we sh always should be leaned on you. This small prayer I'm asking in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Um, so, so far we've understood what is faith. We've understood um, how faith is applied, especially in the life of Abraham. We have seen how he has uh, walked in faith. And in the last class, we saw some connected um, terms such as hope, such as love, how to apply all of these together. That, that's what we saw. And then we also looked at the fact that, um, um, yeah, in a believer's life, we need faith at every step. So from the beginning, I shared that there is something known as saving faith. Saving faith is the measure of faith that God gives us to, uh, to receive salvation. Obviously, when we listen to the gospel, we need some faith to believe. Is that, is that right or wrong? We need some faith, right? So that faith is known as saving faith. So the journey of faith itself begins by putting our trust in the Lord. All right. Uh, and as we continue, we said that we have to live by faith. We have to, um, you know, trust God for the fulfillment of his promises by faith, gain victory by faith. And um, also we said that faith is very essential to walk in the spirit. So when it comes to uh, receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit, we need faith. Without that, we can't receive it. Okay, And also the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. So as long as we have faith, the gift will flow. But if there is no faith, then the flow will be hindered. That's why when it comes to, um, you know, any manifestation, whether it is speaking in tongues or prophesying or, uh, um, you know, uh, discerning in the spirit, miracles, healings, faith is important. We need to build ourselves up in faith very strong. And when we are strong in the faith, there will be a flow, right, of the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit. And then we saw how Paul, he said that, uh, uh, when he finished his journey, that he had completed the race by faith. I have fought the good fight of what? Good fight of? What is the scripture? Faith. Okay, correct. Sister Gertrude, thank you for helping me with that. So Paul said that his life was a journey where he fought a good fight of faith. So in all things, it's about keeping our faith, maintaining our faith, growing in our faith and achieving the purposes of God by faith. Okay, so uh, that is what this life journey is all about. And so for a believer, if we think that at some point we started with faith and then, you know, that's it, then we will not be able to um, glorify God. Okay, because it's like, we are, we are high on faith at one point and then we come down and we're not really journeying with God consistently. So that consistent walk of faith 
is what God expects from each one of us. So today what we will see is we will see how we can develop this faith. Okay, how we can um, nurture our faith. So there is this subject, uh, chapter 9, which says, we must constantly nurture and develop our faith. And in this way, we will equip ourselves to constantly walk in faith. It's like if we were to bring in a plant, Okay, a little small plant, which um, is actually supposed to grow very big. Imagine with me, okay, maybe some, some plant that you're bringing. Uh, we, let's say in India, we are very familiar with the, maybe a people tree or a banyan tree or something like that. So you bring in such a plant, put it in a pot, a tiny tree. Um, but the destiny of that plant is what? Have anyone, has you, have you seen people tree or banyan tree are they huge yeah so they end up becoming so huge okay similarly our faith can become very strong it can become you know really great however when we start off in our faith journey it's like <coughs> you know the way jesus described he said mustard seed okay mustard seed the journey begins with a very small portion or a small amount of faith. But finally, what, what happens? It becomes into a big tree. Similarly, when we think about faith in our hearts, um, we must not think that, okay, my faith is so small and I'm just going to work with this faith. Maybe right now, our faith is small. Maybe right now our faith is small for, um, you know, the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Maybe right now our faith is small to step into our ministry uh, or our faith is small to believe God for the promises. Maybe our faith is small and we're not able to do what God is calling us to do. But that's not the end because that seed of faith, what should actually happen? It should grow. So when you think of a small plant, which has a great destiny, if we nurture it, nurture simply means you take care. How do you take care? How do you take care? Yeah, you pour some water, you put some manure, you, you trim it. You, you're slowly doing everything which is required for the plant. You keep it in a place where it will not die. So what's happening? We are uh, taking care, taking care of that small plant. And if you keep taking care, then ultimately, what will happen? Ultimately, it will become a huge tree. But for that, someone needed to nurture it in the beginning. Someone needed to develop it, right? The same holds true for our skills. Um, Maybe, you know, we, uh, God has called us to be a worship leader. Okay, I'm just saying. And uh, to lead worship in song. We discover a grace on our lives. We're able to sing. Okay, but what has to happen after that? That's a seed. God has given a seed. Now what to do? Correct. So you have to nurture. You have to develop. Even the skill, the grace that God gives us, it needs to be built up. So very similar. I just want us to understand that even faith can be nurtured and developed. So all of us can walk in very, very strong faith in God. But it's not going to happen if you take the faith, put it on the shelf, right? Keep it in the cupboard, lock it. And then you're expecting every day, uh, my faith has to be strong. I have to be able to use my faith. How, how can it grow? Because we are not even nurturing it. Okay, so that's not how faith can be developed. There's something that needs to be done in order to develop the faith. So there are some, um, uh, you know, some concepts, some insights in our chapter today, which we will look at. And... Um, We'll see that, you know, uh, even in the lives of early believers, 
Uh, so here, there's a passage from the book of Thessalonians. Thessalonians is what we're doing in church right now. So hopefully you have a background about Thessalonians, that um, this church was developed during the second missionary journey of Apostle Paul. And he went to Thessalonica with a small team. And he was there only for four weeks. So in four weeks, whatever uh, God led him to teach, he taught in that church. He helped the believers to grow in the word of God. He strengthened them. Okay. Uh, but even after a year, we notice that the church was very strong because they grew in their faith. They developed themselves in the faith, right? And they became strong. So, uh, you know, Paul writes to them different things, but in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, um, we can look at verse 3 maybe. So is uh, somebody able to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3? It's there in the notes. You can just look and read. We are bound to thank God always for you, okay. brethren, as it is fitting. Because your faith grows exceedingly. Okay. So, what does he say? He, uh, Paul talks about the Thessalonian believers. These believers have become strong in God. They did not uh, give up on God even when they had um, a situation where they had to experience persecution. Okay. But, uh, what is something that he is explaining in this one line. Uh, anyone? Are you able to pick it up? Just uh, look at that line again. The last, po the second portion of that line. And the love of every one of you all bounds toward each other. Okay. Um, go further. Read further. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulation that you endure. Fine. So see, he's saying there are two things which the believers are doing, which is their love abounds for each other, meaning they're living in uh, love for one another. And then uh, it says that your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. Second is they are enduring. But before that, what does he say? About faith, what does he say before that? Yeah, correct. W what does he say? <laughs> faith grows exceedingly. Okay, remember that. Faith grows exceedingly. Which <clears throat> means that our faith can grow. It's not that God gives us a measure of faith and, um, you know, it remains the same. It need not remain the same. The faith that God gives us, okay, uh, that faith can actually grow. That faith can actually mature. That faith can actually develop itself. And that is what we want to note here. He's telling the believers that these believers are so strong in God. I told us for almost a year, under severe persecution, these believers were very strong in the Lord. Okay. Uh, but how is it that they kept this kind of strong faith? One is they had love for one another and then they maintained patience and endurance which helped them to keep that faith. Uh, and their faith had grown. You got it? Their faith had grown. So that is what we must expect in our faith journey throughout our lives. We may have started with a level of faith but hopefully now we should have another level of faith, right? Hopefully, when you all graduate, you should have another level of faith. When you're ministering, you must keep going higher in faith. Every year of your ministry should increase in the faith. So our faith must grow exceedingly. It can grow exceedingly. You and I need not remain in the same place with the same level of faith, right? We have to increase our faith or 
nurture and develop our faith so uh, that is something very encouraging otherwise uh, we we may feel very uh, bad about having oh i my faith is so small you know as compared to so and so i am not able to move um, you know in in these matters so like uh, even for my uh, my own life example i can tell you especially when it came to the practice of the gifts of the spirit right the gifts of the spirit particularly prophecy uh, it was a big struggle for me because uh, like when we started out uh, you know how people say things like oh i can see this i can hear this god is saying this god is saying that and i would be like i can't hear anything i can't see anything what are they talking about okay but we'll also see how you can nurture it how can i develop my faith that we'll see but when it came to my experience in the gift of prophecy it was somewhat like that so it was always a struggle and i would wonder god how am i going to develop my faith in prophecy how am i going to be able to have that faith to move in the gift of prophecy right um, but eventually uh, i'll share with all of us you know some ways in which we can grow our faith right so eventually the faith started growing uh, so um, maybe one quick thing i can tell you is in apc we have these uh, weekend schools you may have seen right like saturday saturdays earlier it used to be saturday sunday but now it's only saturday so uh, i started attending the weekend schools not once not twice i don't know how many times i actually attended the weekend school because you remember what did we learn about faith how does faith come faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so if i want faith for the gift of prophecy what should i hear about about prophecy right so i need to spend time in that truth of god that's when faith will come and i'll be able to move so eventually like as i started attending as i started meditating on those scriptures slowly like little by little you know there was one picture here and one picture there i could see something i could sense something in the supernatural law, we keep asking you are you sensing something are you hearing something it started happening little by little little by little even now it's very little but as long as we strengthen ourselves as long as i strengthen myself in that area so then i need to meditate more on those scriptures pertaining to hearing from god then what will happen faith will increase and then the manifestation will come so that is how we must nurture and develop our faith our faith can grow exceedingly okay can you say that my faith can grow faith can grow exceedingly okay repeat that my faith can grow exceedingly okay so we don't have to remain at the place where our faith is right now our faith can grow it can develop it can mature itself now let's come to this uh, thought about how to nurture how to nurture our faith um what what do we know about that how to develop i told us if there's a small plant you have to pour water you have to take care protect it uh, you know maybe put manure so what will we do regarding our faith how to nurture the faith you already know all the answers you just have to say it okay correct god's word isn't it i just said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so the word of god is the place from where you and i can obtain our faith so the more we engage in the word of god okay the more we uh, take time in the word of god faith will grow now we can depend on many other things we can depend on uh, uh, you know maybe just sunday service 
right? You just go to Sunday service. And whatever the preacher teaches on Sunday, that's it. Um, so someone said that um, if we don't read our Bible, if we don't have our own personal study, it's like um, just eat, living on snacks. Anybody? Uh, is it possible to eat snacks? Like little children, they only want snacks. Okay, what, what does the mom say? You won't grow up. You won't become big and strong if you don't eat your food, if you're just going to have your snacks. So sometimes we just depend on maybe a Sunday sermon, maybe a sermon that we heard or, you know, one or two worship songs. And we feel, yeah, now my faith is going to become so strong. All that's nice, but it's not like, you know, solid meals, food, which you need for your own um, growth and your strength. So when we take time in the word of God, you set aside time to read the Bible, to study the word, to constantly be in the word. You know, one of the things that has happened here is all of you are now uh, enrolled in the Bible college. And every day uh, you are listening to the word, right? You are understanding the word. You are believing the word. So what will happen? That's where the growth and the development will come. Growth and development of all kinds, particularly of our spirit man. The spirit man will begin to grow and become stronger because faith comes. Okay, Faith is coming as you're listening to the word of God. Faith comes uh, by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So over there in that scripture, we'll talk more about, you know, how to apply this, how to get faith from the word. Uh, but in that particular scripture, this word of God, if you read that in Greek word of God, that would be the term rhema. Okay. Rhema is the utterance or the spoken word of God, the spoken word of God. Or something that, you know, we are um, hearing from God. So we could even look at this as, uh, let's say, you know, when uh, somebody is preaching a sermon, they are preaching the sermon. It's one set of notes maybe. But as we are listening to the sermon, what happens to us? We feel like God is speaking to me. Yes or no? Yeah. So because there, it's like God's, word, his spoken word, it comes into our spirits. Something, um, you know, particular that God is actually pointing out. So it's like an inspired word. It comes to us and um, we begin to act on that word. We begin to live according to that word. So there are, in, as far as the Bible is concerned, there are two words that you will uh, learn about. One is logos. So the Bible is logos. That is the written word, written word of God. But there is something known as rhema, rhema or R-H-E-M-A, which is the inspired word or the spoken word of God. So for us, our hearts must be open to hear from God. So when we are reading the Bible, we can just read it like a history book. You know, you read uh, verse 1 to verse 31, finished, today is over, next. Okay, just keep reading because um, you have to read the Bible every day. But if we want to develop faith, right, I must be trying to hear the voice of God in what I'm reading. I must be trying to listen to what God is speaking to me. Okay, That's what Rema is all about. Logos is, it's already written. Everything is given here. What is Rema? Rema is the inspired word. God starts to speak to me. Okay, He starts to um, point something out to me. And uh, He wants me to go ahead and work on that. So that is Rema. Okay. Now the scripture says, faith comes by hearing okay, and hearing by the 
word of god so both reading the bible it is valuable i'm not saying you know just by reading the bible you won't get anything no it's god's word as you engage in it something you will get out of it but we get the most out of it when we are trying to hear the voice of god through what we are reading okay and how do we hear the vo voice of god it just gets clearer and clearer you know the more familiar we become with scriptures it becomes clearer not just that um, as we want to study scriptures there are some tools and there are some right principles that we have to use to interpret the bible as well and that way you know we can apply the word in the right manner and it will strengthen us uh, so in this way we've got to continue to nurture ourselves with the word of god i said that rema is a spoken word of god now even though you know god speaks into our spirits one practice we'll talk about this later which you and i as believers need is uh, the practice of confession or declaration so we can take the word and we can speak it to ourselves for example just some time ago we all said loudly what did we say what did we say some time back correct yeah my faith grows exceedingly so what is that it is a confession based on the word of god so when i make a confession i'm speaking to myself and i can hear my own voice right so th the word that god has spoken to me i can speak it back to myself and the more i speak it to myself what will happen faith will grow faith will increase okay we'll read about the power of declaration the power of confession um as we go further in our in our studies but the point that i'm making is one is spend time in the word of god okay not just to uh, read through it but to really hear the voice of god what is god saying to me now so when we move like that faith will increase okay and the word that god speaks to us we can speak back to ourselves so whatever the word promises us we have to tell ourselves like i've said earlier like the declaration on sunday we make our declaration this is god's word this is god speaking to me i am who god says i am so what is that i'm speaking to myself we are speaking to ourselves and we can hear our voice right and it goes deep into our spirits and it begins to build us up okay so faith comes by hearing and hear by the word of god the word of god more specifically is the spoken word or the rema okay so the word that god speaks and when god speaks it to us we should speak it to ourselves okay everyone understood what i'm trying to say yeah not complicated okay thank god cuz uh, when i look at the faces it feels like i'm i don't know what i'm saying <laughs> okay but you are understanding that's good uh, all right yeah some comments here in the chat now moving on i said we must spend time in the word right so how to spend time in the word there are a couple of useful practices which we can um we can um apply and we'll see that it will really give us a lot of clarity as far as the word is concerned so what are these useful practices we must meditate okay what is meditate go to the himalayas anyone no sure meditate in the word of god everyone is going to buy a ticket to go some place to meditate pilgrimage no biblical meditation is not like that it's different so what is meditation meditation in the word of god okay um there are a couple of words which we can look at 
there's a word known as haga h h a g a h and uh, siak okay siak both of these mean meditation so the word haga uh, these are both hebrew words and haga simply means to reflect or to imagine or to um, ponder or think about so when you look at the life of joseph god gave him a dream that he is going to be you know god is going to raise him up he is going to be a blessing um, uh, he will be exalted and his brothers will bow to him so there was a dream which god gave him now we can only uh, imagine that he must have thought about it again and again and again and considered that image that picture and and said okay this is what god is going to do how is he going to do that what should i do when is it going to happen what's what's he doing he's reflecting or he is thinking about it he is um in other words we are saying he, the hebrew word haga meditate on it okay so we must similarly meditate on the word that god speaks to us for example the uh, psalm 23 verse 1 it says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want right the lord is my shepherd so when we consider that word the lord is my shepherd and we rightly interpret it what does it mean it means the way a shepherd takes care of his sheep my god will take care of me okay now now that i have the word of god i must meditate on it how to meditate i will reflect i will think about god's help i will think about god's goodness i will think about god's faithfulness so i am thinking pondering reflecting on that one one subject that's it the lord is my shepherd that's all but what's happening within me meditation so when we talk about uh, meditation in the word of god it's not empty mind is not empty sometimes people think that's what meditation is but as far as the bible is concerned mind should not be empty mind should have the word of god so i put the word of god inside and i start to think about it in different ways in fact another word uh, another way to really understand uh, meditation is Uh, have you seen um, have you seen uh, a cow everyone seen a cow okay so how does a, a cow chew the cud she cuddles yeah sorry sister she cuddles yeah um, so she, keep she chewing uh, right does it on slow process yeah slow process and um, quite continuously so if you look at a cow be chewing something the whole day and you're wondering what is there to chew so much but that is meditation that is meditation because we take a verse or a scripture or what god is saying it's in our minds the whole day or maybe the whole week the whole year we are thinking and thinking and thinking painting pictures in our minds okay god the lord is my shepherd it means it means right this is what god is saying to me this is how god is going to lead me this is how god protects me this is how god cares for me you see it's only one verse but what's happening the depth of that scripture it's like treasure god is opening it up to us you got it that is meditation but if we don't meditate it's like the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he maketh me to lie down we know the whole passage but nothing is inside nothing has really gone inside so it's like taking the complete um essence or the power of that passage and uh, absorbing it that is meditation 
So when we say faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, we have to become people who are meditating on the word of God. Take time to think and uh, absorb what God's word is saying. And in fact, uh, another word to describe this haga is mutter. Okay, mutter. So mutter means uh, when you when you say something uh, repeatedly. For example, um, you can say, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, you know, people may mutter wrong things like, oh, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. Sometimes they say it so often and then they keep hearing it. So what happens? It starts to affect their mind. The mind remains unrenewed. But if we start to mutter the word of God, and say, you know, this is God's word, this is God speaking to me, I am who God says I am, I can do what God says I can do, I will become everything God is. What are you doing? You're just repeating it, repeating it, repeating it to yourself, right? So muttering means speaking uh, to ourselves repeatedly, okay? So that is also meditation. So as far as meditation is concerned, it has, it, it has all these sides to it. Think about the word, speak the word repeatedly, confess the word repeatedly. Then uh, our faith, all these are sources for our faith to grow, for our faith to be developed, okay? For our faith to become strong in God. So in this way, we can strengthen. The other Hebrew word is siak, um, which again means to... Uh, utter or you could even say speak or converse same like mutter so whatever God's word says we have to speak it to ourselves for example like I think Psalm 91 it says he who dwells in the sh uh, shelter of the most high will abide in the shadow of the almighty and then the next scripture the psalmist says I will say of the Lord he is my refuge he is my fortress what's happening he understands that he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide. Or there is the protection of God on us when we are in God. But based on that, what does the psalmist do? He says, I will say. Because God is my protection, I will say he is my protection. I will say he is my shelter. He is my fortress. I will say it with my mouth. Okay. So that is also meditation. We understand, but then I have to make that my confession. I have to make that my declaration. So that is siak, speaking to ourselves. Do we all speak to ourselves or is, is that just me? Oh, you guys don't speak then it's okay, no problem. Uh, you do? Yeah, so then make that a word, make that word based, right? Speak what the word speaks. To yourself rather than um, what are the other ideas that come to our mind which we can speak to ourselves one is of course God which I'm saying you speak that whatever God is saying you speak that to yourself but what are the other sources what we yeah correct Sometimes it's just our own thoughts, right? Our own thoughts influenced by the world, influenced by people. Um, and we, we meditate on that. Okay? Or it can be from Satan. Because Satan puts thoughts in our minds. He'll say, did, did God really say, don't do this the way he tempted Eve? So even Satan can put thoughts in our minds. So there are uh, essentially three sources. One is God. One is uh, Satan. And one is ourselves. So which thought should I keep in my mind and meditate on? Yes, God's thoughts. Okay, so we will, we will ensure that we are uh, deeply thinking about what God is saying to us. Thinking is one. Second is speak to yourself what God is speaking. Whatever God is speaking. You have to speak it to yourself. Think about David. Okay, David, a very young man, he goes uh, to just give lunch to his brothers. 
and he hears about this um, uh, situation where a huge Philist Philistine is uh, challenging the armies of God. Okay, but you see his confession. He speaks so positively. Everyone else says that, oh, we will surely be defeated. But uh, David says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Right? Uh, and he's confident that I, I can bring him down. So look at his confession because he is uh, thinking about the way God thinks about him, you know, as a warrior. And so he is able to take down the giant because his mindset or his process of thinking is in line with what God is saying to him. Okay, so in this way, we must really replace um, uh, even our thoughts. Not, not that our thoughts are wrong, but if our thoughts are uh, influenced by God, or in other words, renewed mind. Renewed mind is powerful, but uh, otherwise, no, you know, uh, we, we cannot just uh, succumb to what our mind is saying. So that is a little bit about meditation. Now, uh, some more helpful practices would be, one is meditation. All of us understood what is meditation? Okay, fine. So we can practice meditation. Now, few more uh, important practices are contemplation. Okay, contemplation means thinking deeply. Thinking deeply about one um, subject or one thing that God is speaking to us. So don't feel ashamed to take time to think deeply in the word. Uh, somewhere we feel good to tell others that I read the whole Bible or I read it two times, I read it thrice. It's all good as long as something went inside. Yes or no? Otherwise, just scanning through, it's a little helpful. But what is contemplation? Deep thinking. So we are, yes, I may have read five verses, but what, what has happened? I've thought deeply about it. Maybe the woman who broke the alabaster jar uh, and she poured, uh, you know, the um, uh, nard on the feet of Jesus. So when I think deeply about it, it helps me understand what is worship. Okay, how should I worship? I should give my all. I should give my best. Uh, I should, um, you know, um, be with the Lord. You see what's happening? I'm thinking deeply about that one incident. And that one incident is teaching me lessons to live by. That is contemplation. When you're deeply thinking about a subject. So I'm not saying don't read the whole Bible. Please read, please read, you know, as many times as possible. But also uh, engage with deep thinking, deep thinking. That is contemplation. Most of the sermons that you, uh, that you hear, uh, right, by, by many people, how does it come? They are deeply thinking. Think about this. This is just one subject, faith, one word, faith. But for four months, we are teaching on faith. Deeply, we have to think, what is faith? How to get faith? How to build faith? So deep meditation is what is called as contemplation. Now, the other practice is visualization. Visualization. What is visualization? The name itself suggests. Sorry. Uh, think deep, correct. So that is contemplation. Meditation is repeatedly your thinking. Uh, contemplation is similar. You're deeply thinking. What is visualization? Hmm? Imagination, correct. See, imagination is one thing where you don't have to pay any money, right? You can be sitting here, but you you could be like, oh, looking at the mountains of uh, uh, whatever, some nice mountains, sitting in class, but mind is somewhere else. Imagination, right? But if we utilize imagination in the right way, it can be very, very um, productive for us. In the 
as far as reading the bible is concerned we can use our imagination to paint the pictures that god wants for us for example maybe we are unwell but going by the word of god i paint a picture of a very healthy healthy me okay so uh, maybe someone's uh, very weak right now but in their imagination as they're confessing the word of god standing on the promises of god they can see themselves strong they can see themselves you know serving the lord mightily in the mind you can paint a picture in line with what the word of god says or um, you know for example remember I, i shared about one particular pastor in south korea who built his church became so it has become so big but he shares about how he used to have pictures in his mind about a large church when he had 23 people in his church but what is that it's actually a biblical principle called as visualization uh, based on what god is saying picture yourself picture yourself picture yourself ministering picture yourself serving picture yourself being strong in the lord picture yourself as a blessing to many people right picture yourself you know prosperous resourceful um giving to others so when you go by the word of god and you begin to picture in this way you begin to walk into it not because it's just vain imagination no in this case god is saying that god is saying okay i will bless you you will be a blessing to many nations so whatever god says as we pray we can ask god god paint my mind with new pictures new um, visuals about the future and that is a part of our faith building exercise okay uh, and and we begin to see that we begin to move with that and it motivates us so that is visualization we can talk so much more about visualization but i think i'll have to um, stop it but you see even in visualization simple exercise like if you take psalm 23 the lord is my shepherd right we can visualize so in our mind we can imagine it's like jesus is going in front of me jesus is telling me what to do what is that you're picturing right imagination um so that way i'm full of the word i'm thinking the word i'm seeing the word in my mind and uh, it begins to really build my faith so that's visualization then finally confession so we'll talk about confession later but confession is to simply speak the word the word is there speak it out all right so uh, what are the four things to meditate in god's word four four terms that i taught no t if you don't tell me this four words quickly contemplation okay before that meditation yes okay meditation contemplation, contemplation visualization visualization and confession confession okay four so uh, as we make it a practice our faith will be built up All right, let's uh, stop now. We'll go for a break and uh, we'll we'll come back in 10 minutes. So, uh Nidel, I can see some feel free. You can you can go. There are some questions here on the chat. I'll see if I can answer. So, uh Nidel is asking some questions about spiritual father and mentor um vision and calling. discipleship okay uh, let me uh, see nidel i uh, suppose i will give you uh, some resources to look up because um, uh, some of these questions are not they may not be directly um, connected to what we are speaking today right so i i will share some resources so that you can uh, get answers to your questions uh, okay thank you we'll we'll connect in about 10 minutes thank you